Now we're ready to continue with further examples of writing chemical equations. Here's our third example. Copper 2 sulfate reacts with sodium hydroxide solution. The reactants are both listed here. They didn't tell us anything about the products, but they did say we're starting with copper 2 sulfate and sodium hydroxide solution. Those are both ionic names. So with copper 2 sulfate, we know we have Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus. And that's going to be a one to one ratio um, to get those to balance. So CuSO4 is our formula for copper 2 sulfate and sodium hydroxide. Sodium is Na plus and hydroxide is OH minus. So you only need one of each of those also, so NaOH. So our two formulas are CuSO4 and NaOH for the reactants. We have two compounds reacting. It's likely that these are going to react in a double replacement reaction. So let's try double replacement. So what would the products be? So we ask ourselves, how do those look? Oh, well, we have a swapping of partners. So just think of your cations swapping to the other anions. So our products now would be copper 2 hydroxide and sodium would now be with the sulfate. So now it's just a matter of figuring out their formulas. I still have Cu2+, plus, but it's now with OH-, minus, which means I'm going to need two of those OH-, minuses. so Cu, parenthesis, OH-, parenthesis, 2, is our formula for copper 2 hydroxide, and sodium sulfate, Na+, plus, with SO4-2-, minus, I'm going to need two sodium ions. So our formula would be Na2SO4 and, of course, the CuOH2. So the unbalanced equation would look like this. Now we need to balance it. So we start by doing our counts. Now I'm going to write the count a little further to the right because it's, it's going to get interfered with over here. Notice that I have sulfate on both the left and the right. I have hydroxide on both the left and the right. It's not breaking apart those polyatomic ions. So I could just count those entire ions together. I don't have to break it up into sulfur and oxygen, into oxygen and hydrogen. So we count our coppers and we have one of those and one sulfate, and one sodium, and one hydroxide, which I'll put over here. On the product side, we have one copper, we have one sulfate, we have two sodiums, and two hydroxides. So what doesn't match is the sodium and the hydroxide. So let's try the sodiums to get those to match. I need two on the left to match my two on the right. So to get two on the left, I need to insert a coefficient of two in front of sodium hydroxide. But that changes my count of sodium to two, and also my count of hydroxide to two. And if I look, my counts now match for all of them. One copper, one sulfate, two sodiums, two hydroxides. So one to two to one to one, that's a simplified ratio. I'm good, we've got the balanced equation. Here's our fourth example. We have a butane lighter. Now butane is C4H10. We'll just tell you that because you wouldn't know that formula normally. Now, if it's taking place in a lighter, what kind of a reaction is it? Because the whole point is to produce a flame. So a lot of heat and light what should come to mind is that this is a combustion reaction. Now, what would the reactants be? They mentioned butane, obviously that's one, but are there any others when we're burning something? And you need to remember, oxygen's always involved, even though it's not mentioned. So butane and oxygen would be our two reactants. The formulas for those reactants, well, butane was given to us, and oxygen, remember, is a diatomic, so C4H10 was a given, and then oxygen is O2. And the products, when we have combustion, we always assume it's complete combustion unless they tell us that it's in limited oxygen. So we're going to assume the products will be carbon dioxide and water. So the formulas for those are CO2 and H2O. So let's write our unbalanced equation, and here it is. Now we need to balance it, and on the left we have four carbons and ten hydrogens, 
and two oxygen as written. On the right side, we have one carbon, two hydrogens, and ooh, be careful, I've got oxygen in both of these compounds, so I've got two and one makes three. Okay, so let's see. Oxygen occurs in too many compounds to start with that one, so let's start maybe with carbon. I have four on the left. To get four on the right, I would need a coefficient of four, which is going to change both my carbon count to four, and it changes my oxygen count. Be careful on those oxygens. I have eight plus one is nine oxygens. So my carbons match. Let's try the hydrogens next. I have 10 on the left and two on the right. So looks like I need to get 10 on the right. So to get 10 on the right, I would have to take H2 times five. So I actually put a five out here and I have five times H2 is 10, but that changes my oxygen count again. So I have eight from the carbon dioxide and another five from the water. So that is 13. Okay, so all that's left is to get my oxygens to match. Now I have two in each oxygen molecule. To get this to match, it looks like what we would need is six and a half. But we can't put in coefficients of six and a half. I mean, this might make the math work out because now I have 13, but I can't have that coefficient of six and a half. So what we can do, since we know the ratio is one to six and a half to four to five, that that makes the math work out, but I can't have that fraction. I can multiply all those coefficients through by two. Now don't forget that this is a one here. We'll change degrees. So if we take these all times two, then I actually have coefficients of two, 13, eight, 12, 16, 17, 18, now, those would be a simplified ratio. 2 to 13 to 8 to 10 does not simplify, and it gets rid of that fraction. And if we double check our amounts, we have 8 carbons and 20 uh, hydrogens and 26 oxygens. What is it 26, really? And we have on the right side 8 carbons and 20 hydrogens. And the oxygens, I have 16 here and another 10, um, and that is 26. So we do have equal amounts. We've double checked it, it does balance. And that's a trick you can do if you get it all to work out and then it seems impossible with the oxygens because you gotta have an even number. Um, just write it in there as a fraction and then get rid of the fraction by multiplying all your coefficients through by what you need to get it to work out, which is generally doubling it. Now soda pop gets its acidic taste because as carbon dioxide gets forced to dissolve in the pop, it combines with water, forming an acid. So what type of reaction is this? It says we have carbon dioxide being forced to combine with water and it forms an acid. So I have two things coming together to make one thing. Well, that sounds like synthesis or direct combination. The reactants would be our carbon dioxide and water. Their formulas are pretty simple, CO2 and H2O. Now, what we're producing is an acid, and specifically, it's carbonic acid. If you put these two together, you have H2CO3. So it's going to be carbonic acid that we're creating, and the formula, as I mentioned, is H2CO3. The unbalanced equation would be CO2 plus H2O yields H2CO3. And as we check our counts, we have one carbon and, careful, three oxygens and two hydrogens. On the product side, we have one carbon, three oxygens, and two hydrogens. So my counts already look like they match. So what does that tell me? It tells me that this reaction is balanced with coefficients of one all the way across. So it's already balanced as written. 
So this is the end. We've done practice problems showing all five of the different types of reactions. Now it's time for you to get some practice at doing these problems on your own.